That's how high I can kick. What's shaking? My name's Cam. Welcome back to another video. You probably don't know this, but aside from being great at being great at karate, <laughs> I'm a romance expert. And now you're probably thinking, well, Cam, if that's true, if you're a romance expert, why have you been single for so long? Well, guess what? The joke's on you. The reason I've been single for so long is because I'm terrible at talking to women. I don't read a lot of uh, romance books. They generally aren't written for hetero fellows like me, which is fine. It's not a big deal at all in any capacity. It's just that I rarely find that I can relate to the characters in those romance books. With that said, I am a big fan of rom-coms. Big time. I eat that stuff up like a, like a wine mum with a cheese platter. Mm. Today I'm going to be talking about some of my favourite and least favourite tropes in the romance genre. And I think of all the different genres, this is the one where these tropes either fall almost completely into either a love it or hate it basket. I love the second chance romance trope. I love it. I genuinely think it's one of the most interesting ways to approach a new relationship in a story rather than just going with the old, you know, love at first sight angle. So the second chance trope is basically when this story starts with our protagonist having either just left a relationship or in the process of leaving a relationship, and the rest of the story is them getting a second chance at love, a second shot with a new person. In most cases, our protagonist, let's just call him Harry for this video, has been hit pretty hard by the breakup. They either got dumped unexpectedly or maybe they caught their partner cheating or basically just doing something else otherwise horrible. Now I think the best part of using this trope is that the writer is actually forced to kind of implement that breakup from the start of the story into the foundation of what is going to be the next relationship, the new romance. Rather than just having two happy people meeting each other and falling in love, you're going to have at least one character that is pretty damaged and that's going to play a huge part in how that new relationship develops. And it's for that reason that generally there's going to be a pretty good character arc. I'm just, I'm going to generalize for a minute, so don't get defensive, but I think most romance stories don't have a lot of detailed character arcs. They'll have a relationship arc where the relationship will change and develop over the course of the story, but usually the characters themselves are still the same people at the end that they were at the beginning. But when you use the second chance arc, you have to have at least one character that is going to go on an emotional journey and change. Usually what you'll have is a really cynical character who believes that love is a sham because they were in love with the last person and they gave it their all and they still got burned. Who can relate? But then they meet someone special entirely by chance and this new special person breaks down those walls and convinces them, shows them that love is still possible. Love is still possible if they just take a chance, if they take a risk, if they just take that leap of faith. Through the course of the story, we watch Harry go from a bitter, heartbroken cynic to a cautiously hopeful person to someone who believes in love again. I just find as far as romance tropes go, this is one of the ones where it approaches romance in a realistic and honest way, even if it's not always pretty. The second chance trope really dunks on the idea that love has to be cute or glamorous. And it's a pretty simple message. It's never too late. And that's pretty dope. I know that to all the boys I've loved before is kind of sacred on booktube, but I'm sorry, I, I hate this trope. I really do. Maybe I'm just being a bit too critical. I'm just a guy with a massive forehead. What do I know? But I just don't feel like this trope, the fake relationship trope, I don't feel like it leaves a lot of space for originality. Hey, maybe I'm wrong. That's just my personal experience, guy. What I've found is that this trope will create a story structure, a number of steps that it follows and kind of has to follow, which ends up being the same rigid, boring formula. So we don't know each other very well. One of us is probably the hot popular kid or the wealthy successful one, and the other one is just plain Jane. We will start to pretend that we're dating, usually to make someone else jealous or to avoid some kind of public humiliation. 
It'll be rocky at first, of course, because we don't really know anything about each other. The only thing we know about each other is that one of us is hot and one of us is plain. We'll bicker a lot about really asinine and inconsequential things, but don't worry, it'll be super cute. And then in a moment of vulnerability, we will kiss. The build up to the climax of the story will be that for whatever reason, we both have to pretend that we don't have feelings for each other, and then we will split. And then one of us, usually the protagonist, will have a revelation or an epiphany, and then end up running as fast as we can so that we can kiss the other one in a really public setting. The end. I don't know, I'm just not a, I'm just not a huge fan, I guess. I think with the fake romance trope, you can really guess pretty much everything that's going to happen or even how it's going to happen within the first like 10 minutes of reading or watching. Again I'm just generalizing off of my personal experience but rarely there's any nuance and the character development is usually just, well the hot bully is still a bully but not to me so that's okay. I'm only human, of course I like this trope. I know, these stories almost always follow the same like can be predictable structure that I just ripped into. <laughs> but come on, there's something nice about letting ourselves believe that there is one person that we are destined to be with. Okay, I think the main reason I really like the friends to lovers trope is because it relies very heavily on the writer's ability to make good chemistry for the two main characters. If there's not good chemistry there, the story just won't work anyway. Usually two characters that have been friends since childhood will be inexplicably reunited after a really long time apart. That's really heartwarming in any kind of story when two old friends get back together and you know they, you read or watch about them reconnecting and regressing to being childhood buddies all over again. That's really nice. I, I enjoy that. But it's even better when those two characters are regressing and starting to realize that those old feelings that they had might have been more serious than they thought, and those feelings are still around. There may be other barriers, which almost always takes the form of one or both of those characters already having a boyfriend or girlfriend, but that friend is still the one. I personally think this one is a cliche, not a trope, but the reason I'm mentioning it here is because it, it ties in really well with the friends to lovers trope that I just talked about. Any time in a romance where one of the two main characters already has a partner, that partner is always shown to be a d-hole in the most obnoxious way. It's like the writer really wants to rub your face in it. Look, 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 okay, look, it's okay for the love interest to leave their boyfriend for Harry, because their boyfriend sucks. I don't know man, That it, it just feels like it's really cheap writing. Or even worse, this is like actually way worse, I really hate it when they do this. The boyfriend or girlfriend is really nice for pretty much the entire story, they're supportive and they're kind, but as soon as it gets to the point of the story where the character has to make a choice between their boyfriend or girlfriend and the love interest, the boyfriend or girlfriend's personality will immediately flip and they will start being a d-hole. Or it will be revealed that they were cheating all along even though there was no suggestion or hint to this in the first place. I think the reason they do this is just entirely to make you feel better about the character leaving their boyfriend or girlfriend for the love interest. But I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world if the character was faced with the genuine dilemma of choosing between a nice, kind, supportive and loving boyfriend or girlfriend, or the person that they are actually in love with. That's more interesting to me. Where is the conflict or the stakes in someone choosing between someone that they're in love with and someone that abuses them constantly? We know what they're gonna do, the choice is obvious. Get out of here. I don't like it personally, but I get it. It's a fantasy, getting swept up by the attractive, wealthy, mysterious person. They could have anyone, so why did they choose me? And also now they can buy me nice things. I get it, it's just not for me. <laughs> Forbidden Love is a fun one. I like this one, and I'm not talking about like, finding out that those cousins that go to your school were 
busted kissing each other at Kevin's party. The forbidden love romance trope can take many forms. Romeo and Juliet's the really obvious one, and the reason I like this trope is because it's usually not just a love story, it's also an exploration of the very thing that divides them. It might be a class divide or a cultural divide. The list goes on. A good writer will use this trope not only to tell a love story, a story about perseverance and hope for those two characters, but usually they'll make some kind of statement as well about the thing that's stopping them from being together. And the end of the story is always super cathartic because you watch these two characters go through so much and fight against so many outside forces that are trying to stop them from being together, and then in the end they get a win, the prize being each other. Unless one of unless one of them dies, which does it happens a lot. Act Maybe a weird example, but take a uh, West Side Story, the musical. It's not just a love story about Tony and Maria, it's also a story about racial tension in 1950s America. Obviously this trope doesn't always have to go into topics that intense, and sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't have to do any kind of deep exploration at all. I just think there's still plenty of room to be very creative with stories like this and take it in many different directions. <laughs> Okay, look, I'm gonna keep this brief, just because of how easy it could be to take something I say here the wrong way. I'm not a fan of the trope where a love interest is revealed to be sick and dying or gets into a serious accident at some random point near the end of the story, just to give the other romantic interest a reason to stick by their side. I don't like it, I think it's stupid. I just don't like it, sue me. Go ahead, do it, Su do it, sue me. Sue me. Sue me, you little bit. I want to be clear, sometimes the uh, terminal illness is a central focus in the story itself. It's important to the plot, and that's okay. That's completely fine. But I feel like there are a lot of stories, more than there should be, where terminal illness or a serious accident is used as nothing more than a plot device just to make the reader sad. You know, if the writer feels like their story's coming to a grinding halt and they need something to give it an emotional punch, well easy peasy, just add a cancer diagnosis or a car crash, even though it's had nothing to do with the story so far. It's a super easy way of making your story really emotional without actually doing any work. I not only think that's lazy, but something about it just feels wrong. You know, like kind of icky. I just feel like serious things like terminal cancer and serious accidents shouldn't be used as a last minute quick draw for writers to try and bring these characters together. I don't know, that's how I feel anyway. So yeah. <laughs> Those are some of the romance tropes that I love and hate the most. There's others, of course, but uh, let's be honest. If you stick around here too long, you and I might fall in love. Damn it. I want to do more videos like this on other genres, so keep an eye out. Let me know what you think about these tropes or others in the comments below, and uh, let's see how right or wrong I am. Thanks for watching. Catch ya.